It's World Nature Conservation Day! This is a day to celebrate the natural world and the living things in it that keep us happy and healthy. And the natural world includes the deep sea. If you saw our last video, this should come as no surprise. After all, we proved that you love the deep ocean and all that it does for you. But we sort of avoided one big question. What about the weird things? You have to admit, what the deep ocean is known best for is its animals that are kind of creepy. Now, that's not totally fair. Last time we showed that a lot of the famous sea creatures most people love are actually deep sea animals. But not all of their neighbors get that same VIP treatment. Some animals in the deep sea can make people profoundly uncomfortable. They have huge, glassy eyes, giant mouths, or they lie in wait to lure unsuspecting prey to its doom. When you think about animals like these, celebrating conservation might be the last thing on your mind. So sure, we all know we should love the deep sea, but do we have to care about the things that are like that? Why does the deep sea have to be so creepy? The answer might be hard to hear. The truth is, it's not them, it's you. I realize now that that made it sound like I was saying, you're creepy. That's not, you're not creepy. I just mean that the reason that people see the deep sea as a creepy place filled with creepy animals has more to do with our own issues than with anything that actually lives there. Specifically, the biggest problem may be our natural fear of deep water. That might be hard to believe. I mean, we just called out weird eyes and big teeth and ambush hunting as features of stereotypically creepy deep sea animals. So it's easy to think that those are the main things that make us see them as creepy. But those qualities aren't unique to the deep ocean. And when we see them outside of it, they can be a lot less intimidating. Consider big eyes a tool for seeing in the dark. There are actually land animals that rely on that same strategy but they don't usually provoke the same terrified reaction. What about ambush hunting? Food is scarce in the deep sea, which encourages ambush strategies to save energy. But that's not really any different from something like a crocodile. And glowworms in caves use lures to catch prey just like an anglerfish. But tourists think that they're so beautiful they pay money to visit them. So if the whole answer isn't what they look like or how they act, the reason deep sea creatures seem creepy must be tied to where they live, the deep sea itself. There's something intimidating about the wide deep sea that makes us feel like anything that lives down there must be scary too. Its creatures are often described as alien, as if the fact that they can live down there means that they're from a different planet entirely. Just existing in the deep sea means that whatever features an animal has are easy to portray as creepy, even if we would never give them a second thought on land. As an example, let me talk about an animal in the way that we would usually describe deep sea life and see if you can figure out what it is. This creature emerges from its lair to feed in the dead of night. What's truly disturbing, though, is how it consumes its victims. This monster's mouth can grow to many times its original size, engulfing the nutrients it harvests with its nightmarish fangs. Which horror of the deep is this? Well, it's actually a hamster. But because it's a cute land animal you've seen many times before, you probably never thought of it in a creepy way. If some of you now have a fear of hamsters, sorry. But there's clearly something about the deep sea that gets the negative parts of our imagination going. This is what I mean when I say that the creepiness of the deep sea is more about our own issues than it is about anything that actually lives there. The fear of deep, wide bodies of water is often called thalassophobia. That fear of the depths probably evolved with humans as a helpful way to keep us from drowning. If you want to stay alive to reproduce, don't swim too far out. But that very useful fear rubs off on things that live in the deep sea. And this has encouraged people throughout history to make creepy assumptions. 
We can sum those assumptions up with a rule. The deeper you go into the ocean, the stranger, larger, and more dangerous life gets. Let's call this rule linear creepiness. Our brains love this. It fits the intuitive idea that if shallow water is safe and the deep sea is dangerous, then things must get creepier as you go deeper. That logic of linear creepiness feeds not just the imagination, but all kinds of media that reinforce our beliefs. Clickbait articles, photoshopped thumbnails, thriller movies, and deep sea documentaries. But that rule of linear creepiness is just not true. Take strangeness, for instance. Just because something lives deeper in the ocean does not make it weirder. In a paper from 2020, Jamieson et al. point out that the features we tend to think of as creepiest, like huge eyes, are actually more common in relatively shallow water. That makes sense. Massive eyes are most useful if there's at least a little light in the environment to help see. The animals that live in the deepest parts of the ocean, where it's totally dark, are actually a lot more normal looking than you might expect. In fact, the deepest known fish, the Mariana Trench snailfish, is just a small, tadpole-shaped animal that looks almost identical to its shallow relatives. You might even call it cute. Linear creepiness just doesn't work here. And the same is true for size. You might have heard of something called deep sea gigantism, which is when animals living deeper down look like larger versions of ones from up above. And that does sometimes happen. Does that mean that there are massive versions of every sea animal lurking in the deep? Well, no. Plenty of animals are totally fine with being small. The deepest living anemone is about the same size as a regular anemone. The same goes for the deepest jellyfish, and while cephalopods like the giant squid are big, it's not a trend that keeps going with depth. The deepest known octopus is small and borderline cuddly. When you put things in perspective, most deep sea life is a lot smaller than we imagine it to be. And finally, just because something lives in deeper water doesn't make it more dangerous. I mean, think about it. The whole assumption of linear creepiness is that things that live in the deepest parts of the ocean that have never seen a human before want to eat you. That just doesn't make sense. Sure, there are some animals on land or in the shallows that might view you as a potential meal, but deep sea animals just aren't that into you. Animals there have evolved to survive in their unique, human-free environment, either sifting through tiny bits of food from above or eating other deep-sea creatures that pass by. If there were an apex predator down in the Mariana Trench waiting for you, what would it have been doing all this time without you? Animals evolve the feeding strategies that they need to survive, and humans have never been on the deep-sea menu. To them, you are for lack of a better word, alien. Of course, knowing these assumptions are wrong doesn't just wipe away people's fears. It's hard to control what you see as creepy, especially with generations of thalassophobia to deal with. And it doesn't change the fact that there are plenty of deep ocean animals that, for one reason or another, feel unsettling. But it's important to remember that these creatures our brain tells us are creepy are not actually dangerous. They're just perfectly adapted to an environment we could never survive in. And it's only fair to assume that you and your adaptations would look as strange to them as they do to you. And the uniqueness of these animals can teach us important things about these fascinating, important habitats beneath the waves. So it's okay to feel creeped out or even to enjoy that spooky feeling. But don't buy the story that the deep sea is full of giant monsters that want to eat you. Yes, the deep sea can be creepy, but it can also be beautiful and fragile and inspiring and all of those qualities at once. So on this World Nature Conservation Day and every day, I hope you'll join us in being thankful for all deep sea life, even the creepy parts. Because as unnerving as it can be, our world would be a lot less special without it. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this look into the reality of deep sea life. We have more videos like this coming up, so I hope you'll look forward to our next release. And speaking of the beauty of the deep ocean, right now we are running a giveaway contest for three copies of The Brilliant Abyss, a deep sea book by Dr. Helen Scales. 
That contest will end on August 3rd, 2022. So make sure to enter on our Instagram at Deep Stewardship. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.